Hi, welcome to MediatorPodcast.com, a podcast and video series about mediation, negotiation, and collaboration. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online valuation, divorce, and mediation services in St. Louis, Missouri. In this week's episode, we are going to discuss, do you have what it takes to be a mediator? With Kimberly Best, She's a registered nurse, mediator, and conflict coach based in Franklin, Tennessee. She's also authored the book of How to Live Forever, a guide to writing the final chapter of your life story. Also, as our guest is Elliot Herland, a mediator focused on workers' compensation cases based in Minneapolis. He's also the vice chair of the ABA section of dispute resolution in the membership committee. Welcome, Kim and Elliot. We kind of had people had to be pushed out into this mediation space, if you will. And now everybody's either like, well, I've been doing this for a while. Like, yeah, you know, like, let's get together and talk more about our skills. But it also kind of gets us to everything has changed. Everything, you know, like everything that we knew is how it was done you know, I was talking to somebody last night and I was like, when are we going to rewrite the story? When are we going to stop saying this is how it was done? This is how we used to do things. This is how I knew how to do it. When are we going to write the story of how it is happening and how we are going to see it happening? So what, what do you guys see as the future of mediation for mediators, for people, for anybody wanting to get into this space? Because it's hot. It's a lot going on right now. That is such a good question. Um, That's a great question. So I'll tell you what my hope for the future of mediation is. Um, I think, um, Elliot, go ahead. (laughs) Well, I I think where you were going with that is that mediation takes a, a bigger role in the resolution of all kinds of issues. For instance, for me, it involves certain legal issues uh, specific to a certain area of the law. Um, Melissa, I think you're also involved in a very specific area of the law. And, and Kim, you're in a, a, a an extremely uh, interesting area that I, I didn't even know there was mediation involved in your area of expertise. Mm. So, so my hope for the future of mediation um, is that it becomes the first choice in conflict dispute, not litigation, that it's mediation first. And that the skills that it takes to mediate and what people learn about handling conflict and mediation um, is expanded <laughs> to a personal level so that, so that we can learn to mediate uh, in our own homes Uh, in relationships, um, in communities, uh, in making decisions around the government. Um, Yeah, so um, my my hope is that it, oh, I I remember what I was gonna say. The exciting thing about mediation is that it is so new. Mm -hmm. And I think in it being so new, the potential is limitless. But I think it's our responsibility as mediators to help help keep it in elevated conditions. So I know people who've done mediation and they're like, or have been to mediation and they say, oh, that was terrible. So there's gonna be, you know, growth and pain, but as I think we keep making it as professional, as thorough, as um, comprehensive in skills that are around, not, not just how to reach agreement, but all the things Elliot mentioned, including, um, you know, how best to handle conflict. Um, how, how best to empower people to make those decisions, um, that the, the, the potential is limitless after that, as far as um, mostly using it as a, as a form of um, conflict resolution before litigation. Right, and I think it's important for us to understand that mediation will not necessarily work in, in the idea of it's going to settle, but it, it, it prepares people for litigation because some cases need to be heard either by a judge or an arbitrator 
or, or a jury, whatever the, the case might be. Uh, so I think what we want is for mediation to either be a bridge toward peace uh, or a bridge toward a more informed litigation. Well, and there are some times where <clears throat> we can mediate, you know, maybe there's five issues and we can mediate two or three or maybe even four. Mm -hmm. And and I'll tell people, listen, we don't have to be like, this isn't grade school. We don't have to get a hundred. We don't have to be perfect. But if we can limit it to really one issue that the judge has to deal with and that you guys really can't figure out, that's going to be way more cost effective than mm -hmm. having all of these issues that are clouded. Um, and I think that that's one way, you know, right now you have a lot of courts that you're going into litigation and then the court is kicking you back out to mediation and saying, okay, mm -hmm. you need to at least go to two hours of mediation before you can come back to court, you know, or mandatory mediation before they can even, go to court to begin with, you know, like a lot of states already have that in play or counties and, and they're looking for people to help with that situation. When I tell people, could you be an expert witness? I say, sure. Anybody can be an expert witness if you stick to what you're good at mm -hmm. and you do something of passion, right? I love what I do. So I'm going to be better at it. It's the same with mediation. Mm -hmm. There's mediation in all realms, mm -hmm. but if you pick to do mediation in a realm that you love and that you have passion for, then that's where you're going to be most successful. And you know it, right? You could mediate electrical issues. I don't know if you were an electrician, right? It, it doesn't mean that you have to have really any skill set or any background, it's do you have the love and passion for that? And then can you hone some of that? Mm -hmm. um, but interpersonal and then sharing everything. The other thing that you said is like sharing between mediators, you really have to start to see that there is no competition, that in the mediation, the way you show up as you is a big part of it. And so I'm not for everyone neither is any mediator, but there are, are times where if you can hone how you connect with people and you can listen and you can be empathetic, that makes you a better mediator because you can deal with different types of people. And that I think helps you be successful. Absolutely. You know, Melissa, um, as far as the future of mediation and the when, when you described that things are in litigation and then they you know, or mediation is mandated before you can move forward. What I would like to see is mediation first, mm -hmm. because going through the litigation process itself is building acrimony, particularly in families. So the opportunity, you know, they're, they're further apart because of the process, the legal process. So if we could do mediation early in the process, I think it would, it would make our job easier, but it would also make the outcomes better for them. It would keep those relationships from, from becoming so fractured as they do. I also want to, one more comment that I meant to make before about the, the practice of mediation. I think community mediation centers are a great place to start honing your skills. Mm -hmm. And especially now with the court backlogs, I know our community mediation centers are starting to alleviate those and we're taking the non-represented cases. Um, so there's a lot of pro bono mediation for that and a lot of learning opportunity. And those are situations where there's co-mediation. So they're pairing up people who um, have experience with newer people. What a great opportunity to learn how to mediate. 